everyone and welcome to another episode of Africa Carrefour. Thank you for joining us here and today we will be talking about something that has been happening very recently. It is graduation. So again, once more, congratulations class of 2021. As I said in the last uh, update that I gave, I also did graduate. And because it's been a few weeks since graduation, I've actually been thinking a lot about that occasion. You know, the academic tradition and the conferrals of degrees are a little bit of a weird process. You know, first, we all have to dress up in these gowns that make some of us look like clowns and then follow some ancient protocol that dates back to who knows what and when. And, you know, typically, the university has all this stuff. We have to go under these traditions and ways in which we walk in and all whatnot. But one thing about commencement is that they typically have a commencement speaker. Honestly, I don't know why, um, you know, because people are going into the world, maybe it's one more motivation for them, you know, it works, you know, I mean, everyone sometimes needs to hear a good motivational speaker. But hardly anybody remembers who their commencement speaker was or what they even said. Because as I was reflecting on this, back to my graduation as, when my, as an undergrad, I don't even remember who my commencement speaker was. I hardly even remember anything that happened in that commencement on that day. In fact, as I was preparing for this episode, I had to go back on YouTube to try to watch what happened on that day. And I will be very honest with you, I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked at some of the things that were said there, some of the things that were done, because I could hardly remember anything. And just for that fact, it took me back to one of the very first classes I had as an undergrad. And the professor boldly proclaimed and told us there that none of us are going to remember anything about his class in four years' time when we're ready to graduate. And it was true. And But why do we still have commencement speakers? Why do universities still have this, even though many times people forget? I mean, the only thing I can remember from that graduation as an undergrad many years ago was really the party after and the goodbyes that we bade each other as we departed from, you know, to our various corners of the world that we're in right now. So who knows? This year, due to COVID, um, a lot of things changed in the way universities did uh, commencement. For one, they were done in big open football fields. And sometimes if you're lucky, you get the, the you know, good weather. But for us here, it was hot. We're sitting outside and then at one point it just became like the rain was going to pour down heavily. So everything was just rot. So a lot of the typical um, protocol um, um, was bypassed. You know, of course, the main thing were there. They sang the weird songs and we all stood up and degrees were conferred and all of that. But as I was reflecting on not having a commencement speaker at my graduation the uh, past few weeks, I began to ask myself, what sort of commencement address would I really want to listen to? And I couldn't really come up with anything. But my mind took me back to 2014 when I was a student at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln at the African uh, Student Festival uh, Cultural Celebration when I was asked to give a keynote address that year. And as I reflected, I went back and looked at the speech that I wrote. I decided that, oh, you know what? Maybe I should read that and maybe that can... Uh, you know, be as some sort of a motivation for me. Um, and, you know, as I've completed this phase of my academic journey. So that is what um, we're going to focus on today. It's just a, a trip down memory lane, at least for me, but also maybe some of you are going to find this uh, speech um, very useful and maybe it's going to um, serve as a motivation to, you know, to you all as well as it did uh, to me um, many years back. And even um, today, as I read it again, I was a little bit um, moved by some of the things I said many years ago. So here it goes. The speech was titled, I am Africa. Um, before I continue, again, this was given in 2014, so some of the references may be a little bit dated, uh, but you know they were relevant at the time. So just um, bear with me on that. I am Africa. Hope you are all enjoying the program thus far. 
First, I'd like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to speak. I just realized from the program that I am the barrier between you and dinner, and that is not a good place to be in. So I promise I won't hold you too long from your food. Just by quick show of hands, how many of us in the room are Africans? Or at least how many of us are willing to admit in public that we are Africans? You can now put down your hands. Have you guys noticed? Suddenly, being African is cool. I mean, come on. Haven't you heard of Lopita, Chiwata Legio 4, Ngozi you know, Chimamanda, you know, Chris Abani, Samuel Leto, Didier Drogba, and the list goes on. It is iconic Africans like this that stand as our most visible continental representation. They make Africa look good. While the media obsession with these icons are great distractions from our political and the problems caused by our eternal leaders, exceptional and rare icons like Mandela don't quite pave the way for a realistic projection of today's young Africans. What does it mean to be African or to be from Africa? And what are these students of the University of Nebraska echoing about Africa today? I am Africa. This is a very bold statement. If you know me too well, then you will know that I would hardly refer to myself as an African. Not because I am not, but because today many people around the world think of Africa as a country and not a continent. And when I'm always introduced and they say he is from Africa, I always politely reply, I am from Cameroon. How I wish you could all see the look on their faces when I say Cameroon. Cameroon, what? Where, where is that? The truth is, many people know very little about Africa and the fact that it is a continent with about 54 countries. George Kimball couldn't have expressed it better when he said, the darkest thing about Africa is our ignorance of it. But in an occasion as such, I know that none here will challenge the assertion when I say that I am an African, for in fact, I am truly an African. When we talk about Africa, it's important to start from the beginning, because one cannot know one's root without knowing where one's from and what it means to be an African student studying in the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Ever since Kwame Nkrumah in 1957 boldly declared Ghana's independence, a wave of change swept across the continent, and by the late 1960s, almost all African countries had gained independence. But the truth is, a vast majority of Africans are still trying to define themselves. Perhaps this is perfectly illustrated in a popular joke around the continent. The story goes of uh, people traveling in a plane and then a pilot uh, announced and said, ladies and gentlemen, the plane is losing altitude and the baggage must be thrown out. A little later, the pilot is said again saying, we're still losing altitude, we must you know, throw everything out. And then, you know, as the plane continued to descend, you know, despite everything being thrown out, the pilot announced again, still going down, we must throw out people. Then there was a big, you know, surprise by, you know, the, the folks in there. And the pilot said, okay, to make it fair, passengers will be thrown out in alphabetical order. So, A is for any Africans. Of course, we all know they're going to start with us. Any African on board, no one moved. B, blacks. Any blacks on board, no one moved. C, colored. Anyone, no one still moved. D, darkies and no one moved, then a little black Nigerian boy, I'm sorry, we had to use the Nigerian, yeah. a little black Nigerian boy looked at his dad and said, Dad, since we are not Africans, black, colored, or darkies, what are we? To which his dad replied, Tonight, son, we are zombies. <laughs> As you can see, depending on the circumstance, we have an ever-changing identity. But the danger comes in when we let others define for us who we are. I am African not because I have a funny or difficult name or eat special food with special seasonings or wear some special material clothes. Because 
All because I do not have a more exotic story to tell doesn't mean I am not an African. To say that I am African is not simply boast in the rich culture and diversity of our continent and nations, it is sharing the pain of the violent conflicts that the people of Liberia, Somalia, the Sudan, South Sudan, Libya, Nigeria, and Egypt share. That the plight of the laborers from India and China who settled on our native soil is a plight I share. Saying this reminds me of the words of Tabumbeki, former South African president who undoubtedly one of the wisest African politicians of the 21st century, on the occasion of the birth of a new South Africa said, I am born of the people of the continent of Africa. I am formed of the migrants who left Europe to find a new home on a native land. Whatever their own actions, they remain still a part of me. In my vein curses the blood of the Malay slaves who came from the East. My mind and my knowledge of myself is famed by the victories that are the jewels of our African crown. The victories we earn from Inshawala to Khartoum, as Ethiopians, as the Ashantis of Ghana, or the Babers of the desert. I am he who made it possible to trade in the world market in diamonds, in gold, in the same food for which my stomach yearns. As bold as this may sound, Far too long as Africans, we have let others define and create for us an identity. And so do in condition and minds to what we can or cannot do. This is perfectly illustrated in the Economist magazine cover that depicted Africa as a hopeless continent. To make it worse, there is a famous picture of Earth by night from space. And if we look at this picture, oh, there we go, it's coming up on the slide. Africa is indeed a dark continent. Things are indeed falling apart, especially when we let others define us. Why do we let others define us when we have so much potential? This illustration from one of my mentors puts things well into perspective. Africans are like elephants in the zoo. The elephant may have all the power to knock down a building and be free from its bondage. But from childhood, it has been conditioned to believe it, can, it can't break the chains or strings. Even if the chains or strings only exist in its mind. This kind of elephant in the zoo prevents us from achieving our full potential. Perhaps they are right after all. We have leaders who stay in power for too long only to enrich themselves and not care about what is happening to the people they are supposed to serve. Some of our economies will only operate if they get foreign aid, which in my opinion is one of the greatest African plague. That's a conversation for a different day. Perhaps they might just as well be wrong. Yes, we might be that elephant in the zoo, but just like Abel Camus said, Man is the only species who refuses to be what he really is. And today, it feels good to be African. It feels good to be African because out of necessity, we Africans have realized our limitations and are striving to overcome them. Yes, we can. And we are because overcoming African problems is solving the problems for the rest of the world at the same time. Now, back to the picture of Earth from Space at Night. I look at this picture differently because all the places where light is are the places where people are mostly watching TVs and catching up on the latest episode of their favorite shows. How I Met Your Mother, Scandal, and the list goes on. While the rest of the world is taking selfie and trying to understand Facebook privacy settings, Africa and Africans are busy trying to solve the world's problems. Here are just a few examples. Have you heard of Dolos? In 1963, in the South African town of East London, Eric Merrifield watched the storm rip off the harbor of East London. The Dolos was invented, a piece of block that is being used in every harbor around the world now as a breakwater. The global shipping economy will not be possible without this African technology. 
What about pay as you go? Did you know pay as you go is an African technology that was coined by Vodacom and is being used as one of the most dominant forces of economic activity in the world. It is reported that about $25 million is being transacted daily on this. You're probably wondering how. We have also found ways to make available technologies to send money, the Mpesa in Kenya. This has been used to do everything, pay school fees, exchange money, and even used to bribe you know, law enforcement. We have even taken a step further in Ghana to check on to check on validity of medicines. This is very important in this part of the world where fake medicine is um is being sold on every corner where you can take the barcode of a medical drug, you know, send it through a text and it is automatically verified with a message back to you if that is a good drug or if it's fake. You don't have clean water or no water at all, no problem. We have that covered too. It's amazing what a young boy on a beach in Limpopo wouldn't want to take a shower can come up with. How about taking a bath without water? This is the dream of Ludwig Marachin. He did this trying to save water but in the end provided a much needed solution to more than half of the world's population. Do you know that about 2.5 billion people live on this planet without proper sanitation? About 1 billion do not have access to clean water, and more than 345 million people have no access to water at all. You know what's even amazing about this boy? He did all of this with only a high school chemistry knowledge, and using his phone the internet from his phone, no fancy laptop or a multi-million dollar lab. On top of that, he had no money. He only had $5 allowance a week. In 2011, he was the first African to win the Global Student Entrepreneur of the Year. How about no electricity? Young Malawan William Kawamba had big dreams of revealing his family from poverty. He didn't need a fancy engineering lab or tools to realize his dream. Using old bicycle parts to make a windmill and discovered electricity for his family business and village, creating currents of electricity and hope. I was privileged to visit the Apartheid Museum in South Africa this January. One of the newest additions to this museum is the Nelson Mandela Wing chronicling the life of this great hero and his fight for the birth of a new South Africa, the Rainbow Nation. As you walk out the doors, you immediately see a wall inscribed on it with these words of Mandela, the future is in your hands. So today, African students of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I ask you, what are your limitations? What are you doing? Have you recognized your limitations? Your continent and country needs you. Nobody can fight for us except we ourselves. Just like Ngozi Okonjo Iwela, Nigeria's finance minister, said, it will be very easy for me to sit at the World Bank and earn a nice salary and criticize. However, I gave up a comfortable career to come here and do my bit because I recognize that nobody but us can clean up our mess. The future is in your hands, students. We need you to write a new chapter of our history and lead us into a future that our parents could only dream of existing. I challenge you to use the world to figure it out. This is the only way we'll be able to achieve our true African potential and be the change that we want to be. Today, yes, it feels good to be an African. Thank you. There you have it, class of 2021. I hope that as you have graduated now and are facing the world, that you are facing the world knowing or going in fully prepared to take it over. Your continent and your country needs you. I can't stress this enough. No one, I mean absolutely no one can clean up our mess except we ourselves. 
so i hope that as you go out there and you achieve great things that you will remember where you're from and that you remember that there is a continent and a people waiting for you to come back until next time thank you for joining us at the carrefour